Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. Okay, this is part four of the compound morphing shape series and this is the last one that we need to do. This shape will animate out into the, the bevel form and then scale back a bit into the S-bend ribbon. And we will also have a look at getting your typography to fit the form of this compound shape as well. All right, we're going to do this step by step, so let's get into a project and get started. For this compound shape, we are going to use replicators, so the first step then is to set up the replicator source. I'm just going to select my group and drag in a rectangle shape layer. In geometry, we want a height of 50, a width of 1, and we will center that. So you can see with the shape selected the anchor point is sitting at the center by default. We want it to sit right at the base, right at the bottom edge of the shape. So we have a height of 50. To place it at the bottom we'll have minus 25 on the Y anchor point. Right, I'm going to label this as upper and replicate that. For the replicator shape we want wave. Set the amplitude to 0 for now. Start point minus 350, end point 350 and we'll crank the points up to 500. Just going to label this replicator as upper and that is the first step done. Okay from here we can start animating this replicator. I'm going to animate it by scale so on the first frame I'll set that scale to 0 set a keyframe and we'll have it animate out over one second. Okay, so just something like that. Now to get the bevel to animate, we're going to animate the source. We don't want it to kick in right away, so right about here, the source here, we're going to take the shear parameter, the X shear, set a keyframe there, and it depends on how you want to do it. Let's just have it finish right here. And we want that to be minus 30. Okay, that will do. So from here we want to add the, the bottom part. So we're just going to grab this replicator I'm going to duplicate it, call it lower. Just going to rename the source, call that lower, because we're going to grab this source for the upper one, duplicate that, rename it lower, and drag that in as the source for the next replicator. I'll just drop that under drag lower, under, upper for the replicator and the source. Now in geometry for the lower source, uh, not geometry, for properties we're going to change that anchor point to 25. We'll remove the keyframes on the shear and we will link to the upper one. but we want it to work in the opposite direction, so for scale we'll have a value of minus 1. 
I'll grab this lower replicator as well, remove the keyframes on the X scale there and link that to the upper one. Okay, so that is the top and bottom. A few things to do from here. Okay, so from here actually we want to increase the scale this animates out to. So let's make that 120. Okay. Now from here I'm just going to come a couple of frames forward really just to make working with the keyframes easier so I can lasso keyframes without grabbing uh, another curve that starts at the same point. I'm going to set a keyframe on that X scale and half a second, so 15 seconds more. It's 30 frames per second this project. We'll have that settle back to 100. Okay, just something like this. And for that same range, we're going to grab upper. Set a keyframe on the X shear and have it come back to 30. Okay. Then I'm going to grab this lower replicator here. We'll come and grab the amplitude. We're going to link that to the upper replicator. And over the same range, we're going to set a keyframe there, a keyframe here, and let's have it go to 35. And then we need to come into each replicator and make sure we have a line angle checked. Okay. Just finesse this amplitude curve. Right, we're almost done. From here it's just a matter of cloning and masking. So I'm going to group the upper and lower replicators together and call this group right and then I'll clone that and call the clone left. I'll turn off right so you can see left is just a clone, of course. We want to invert it on the y-axis and the x-axis so that it becomes a mirror. So I'm going to go minus 100 on the x, minus 100 on the y-scale. And if we turn on right, you can see the result there. But note that the clone right now is it's two layers sitting on top of each other and the clone is obscuring bevel. It's coming in with the, with the ribbon end already. So we just need to mask. We're going to mask the right. I'm going to drag in a shape mask. Whatever your needs are for your project size, up to you. I usually just make my mask bigger than it needs to be. So this is 1920 by 1080. So I've made my mask 2000. 
uh, in height and width, and then I want the mask to sit exactly at the middle there. So I will give the mask an anchor point of minus a thousand, and so it sits right there. And that is that. That's the compound shape animation complete. And you can just reverse your keyframes to animate it out. Okay, so yeah, that's the last compound shape that we wanted to do. And from here, we'll have a look at getting the typography to fit into this waveform. Okay, as you see, I've added some text to the project and I've turned the background on. I'm just using Roboto Regular 46 here. I'll just make that bold. It's centered for alignment and centered in the canvas as well. Right, so for the typography, let's go to Layout, choose Layout Method, Path, for Path Shape, Wave, and you see our replicators are waves. The type is now on a wave path, and we get the same parameters here. So we can, let's just start by giving the typography path the same start and end values and uncheck path, uh, uncheck wraparound. Amplitude for replicators is at 35 and we'll just come to the baseline here to drop the text down. So that's all we have to do to get the text to fit to the shape but this is something we might want to publish for Final Cut and we wouldn't want the user to have to micromanage the values for the typography path and always having to match them up for whatever you provided for the replicators. So we can actually link between the two. So let's have a look at that. It has a start point and an end point, but we can't just link to a replicator directly. You'll see that there's nothing there to correspond to, so we'll undo that. We have to do it point by point. So we'll do x, start x. You'll find the corresponding value for the replicator here in object shape parameters, start point x. And I'll duplicate that and this will be the y. Style, style, what was it? Path options, object, path options, start point, Y, to object, shape parameters, start point, Y. Okay, that's linked, and we want to do the same now for the endpoints as well. X end and I'll duplicate that Y end And there we go. Now the amplitude, there's something about linking uh, amplitude for type path to a replicator. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to be a 10 to 1 relationship. So if we grab the typography, grab the amplitude, and link that to the replicator, you'll see it jump. So then in the link scale, just set 0.1 as the value to restore that. So now whatever value you choose to animate this to, the text will keep up for the amplitude. And from here, so we would want this to animate in. I'm going to come a full, let's see, from about here just when this animation starts kicking in. Okay, 
I'm going to grab the typography path offset. I'm just going to keyframe it directly. You could ramp this, of course, instead, so you've got something adjustable to publish for Final Cut. What we'll do, we'll set a keyframe here and just drag it out and let's have it, what's that, that's 102, let's have it take a second to run in. So it'll come and settle in there around about then. And of course we want it clipped to this as well. So I'm going to grab this graphic, I'm going to clone it, and I'll put an image mask on the text group and drag in that clone group as the source. And I'll just call this clone, clone clip. All right, so that's the last of the compound shapes that we wanted to learn how to do. Just to recap, this all comes from trying to reproduce an After Effects ribbons project that I saw at the Envato Market, and I wanted to work out how to do the same kind of animations in motion. So there's a link in the description if you want to go and check that out. These are the reproductions that I've done to work out how to do the changing shapes. And what I've passed on to you is how to do the shape transformations, you know, the morphing shapes. Maybe one day we'll come back and have a look at how to do a full ribbon reproduction um, with all the added layers and the popping graphics and the lines and all of that. Uh, I want to move on to some different things, but no, let me know if that's something you're interested in. We can come back and look at, look at the total graphic, I guess. Okay, well, hey, thanks very much for sticking it out. And... Thanks for watching.